Three, two, one. It's Magic Brad for the Magic Brad Show, and I've got a guest on. We've made it, had managed to make it. There was some inclement situations last night, so we had to bump it forward. And being entrepreneurial, nothing's stopping us. And her name is Karen. The last name is Ford, right? Yes. <laughs> like the car? No, not well. It is like the car, but I'm not related. <laughs> oh, sure you are somehow. You better check that out. You might be having some stocks growing up. Hey, there you go. <laughs> so you're out in the west, or the east, out east, West Virginia, right? That's right, the eastern part of West Virginia. <laughs> also make it really complicated. You're on the east coast and then the western Virginia. And then That's right. <laughs> the interview yesterday with someone from Florida, and, I, and they said they're from Florida, and I said, oh, out east. He goes, no, west Florida. And I'm thinking, <laughs> west Florida? Oh, I get it, it's a peninsula. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> so you married and got kids and all that kind of stuff or are you oh, single yes. and crazy? you got a herd oh married kids grandkids the whole nine yards <laughs> got them all <laughs> not at all <laughs> i don't have any children myself but uh, my old business partner had kids and they had grandbabies and that was his life and my wife's got one i'm more of a spectator there you go I get to watch <laughs> from afar <laughs> that's it so how long have you lived there in uh, Virginia well I've lived it my entire life in West Virginia actually born and raised here and uh, you know that doesn't mean that we don't vacation other places which mm -hmm. we certainly enjoy uh, but yeah always West Virginia is always home so <laughs> I grew up here in Minneapolis Minnesota 53 years in the same house then I met my wife and we moved to the western suburbs and did awesome. that for a couple of years and then we wanted to experience something new so we went down kind of by you by Asheville North Carolina yeah that's it Asheville's there. a beautiful place as well it's a totally different vibe down there though in comparison I mean everything's like that you know in New York they're out there on the east coast and they're kind of tell it like it is and Midwest they never make a decision in California they kind of tell it like it is but that's not really how it is <laughs> right <laughs> yeah oh, you put pin that correctly. <laughs> so you're in the financial world. You're a financial coach. Does that make you a financial advisor, financial planner, or you just kind of tell people what to do with their money? Well, actually, as a coach, I ask questions to find out exactly where they are financially and where they want to be. What's their goal? And then I also ask a series of questions because if I tell someone to do something or what they need to do, uh, Sometimes they can buck that and, or put their heels in the ground, so to speak. But if they come up with the idea themselves, so I'll ask questions because ultimately if they come up with the answer of what they're willing to do, then nine times out of 10, then they're going to do it because it was their idea. I totally but agree. I kind of guide them into that, not manipulation, but kind of guide them and help them to see. Sometimes it takes another pair of eyes looking at your financial situation uh, to see exactly where the change needs to occur. Uh, but because they're in it, and a lot of times what happens is people come to me when they're already having some financial difficulty or they don't see a way out of debt, a fresh pair of eyes can see it you know, ultimately, I'll give you an example. I, I coached a couple one time. You're going to find this humorous, actually. <laughs> okay. I coached a couple one time and it was the first coaching session. So I asked a series of questions to find out exactly what their situation was, what their incomes were, all, listing all of their debts. And because I need a good snapshot to see exactly how am I going to help you? It's not a cookie cutter coaching. I don't give the same answer to each person or each couple because every person's financial situation is different. Sure. So I asked all these questions and then I said, okay, is there anything else? And her face turned beet red and said, well, I have some credit cards that he doesn't know about. I said, okay, so we stayed calm and we listed those. And I said, all right. I said, now, is there anything else? And his face turned beet red. And he said, well, I have some credit cards that she doesn't know about. And I said, okay, so it stayed really calm. It actually could have turned into a marriage counseling session. Mm -hmm. But at the end of it, I said, now look, you know, we could turn this into World War III right now, but we're not gonna do that. 
well, we have all the cards on the table, no pun intended. I said, but we've listed all of the debts. So now what we need to do is we need to move forward. And so long story short, they had an astronomical amount of debt. They had credit cards that they both knew about and both were on those cards, but then each of them had cards that the other one didn't know about. All in all, between the two of them, they had 86 credit cards, 86 oh. credit cards. And uh, that, was, um, that was eventful. That was an eventful coaching because every one of those cards had a balance on them. Oh, absolutely. And so, you know, that was interesting. But, you know, teaching them and coaching them into how to get out of that debt and what to do. Um, and then they started applying it. So that was great. So that's why I say it's not a cookie cutter coaching that I do because everyone's situation is different. Well, it makes a lot of sense. I like your approach where you ask the questions and it's not manipulative because some people can use that, uh, you know, that neuro-linguistic programming and that's a powerful thing. And if it's right. in the wrong hands, like a timeshare salesman that just wants the money, right. it can get pretty bad. But uh, asking the questions, that does put a pretty, it, it opens up something new in their head. Like um, oh, there's yeah. a, a guy that I uh, used to work with that did trade show sales training. And he talked about, he called them Emerson's six friends, who, what, where, when, how, and why. And he would ask those questions. And that way the person gave you very good data. Like things like, you know, just are you the person that's responsible for making the purchasing decisions? You get that one out of the way. Cause if they're not, the next question might be, are you the person that might put me in touch with that person? So you ask those questions, you can really quantum leap through it and there's a lot of stuff that people just don't want to answer yeah that's so true you know uh, another example i'll give you <laughs> now i am an avid coffee drinker myself so i am not saying you can't drink coffee but i was coaching this young man and actually he didn't have a lot of debt to be honest with you he had a pretty good income and he came to me because he wanted to learn how to build wealth and etc he had a little bit of debt but i thought man something there, there there's a piece missing here because i thought where is all this money going and so i just looked at him i said do you drink coffee and he said yeah and i said okay now do you make your coffee at home or do you buy your coffee he said oh i don't make my coffee at home i buy my coffee i said okay all right i said now how often do you buy it and he said every day on my way to work and i said okay, so what do you get? And he told me, and I said, how much does that cost you? And he told me, I said, and you get this every day on your way to work. He said, yes. How many days a week do you work? And he told me five days a week. And so I said, every day? And he said, yes. Long story short, he was spending $350 a month on that latte. And I thought, okay, we came to the conclusion here. And so he didn't know, he didn't see that. He saw three bucks here, four bucks here, five bucks there, whatever, but he didn't see the big picture. How much was it costing him every single month? You know, you're spending over $3,500 a year on coffee. Mm -hmm. And I said, do you want to keep doing that? And he said, no. <laughs> so he decided he was going to still buy his coffee, but he was just going to do it as a treat once a week on a Friday at the end of the work week and he was going to start making coffee at home so i didn't come up with the plan he came up with the plan i just showed him how much he was spending just each give month him some it. turn the light on a little bit right yeah. Put a and spot. that can go the other way too you know because you you don't know you don't realize you know three bucks here six bucks here it's not that big a deal and it adds up but you don't really notice it you can do the opposite and i do do the opposite i got my account set up so it automatically transfers 10 bucks every week into a different account and then it transfers it from there into a retirement account automatically. Right. So I don't see it. Just right. Let the technology do the work for me. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's true. So I, I got to ask you this question because it's got to do with money. And this is sort of a side thing. And you're probably okay. savvy or not. I'm not sure. But what do you think of the whole cryptocurrency thing? Ah, uh, <laughs> well, you know, Several years ago, I, and I and I don't quote me on this, but I think it was maybe seven or eight years ago. It was really at an all-time high. Bitcoin, it was it was up there. It was like fifteen hundred dollars or something like that. And then some things happened, and you know, it dropped down. 
I haven't checked it this morning. I think I checked it. My husband and I were on vacation. Uh, but anyway, long story short, it dropped, but it's starting to come back up. You know, I have two schools of thought on that. Anytime that you invest something in something, whatever it is, you have to ask yourself, if I lose all this money that I have invested in this, am I going to be okay? And so that's the number one question that people need to ask themselves, whether you invest 15,000, 100,000, 500, if I lose all of it, am I going to be okay? And so to answer your question, do I have Bitcoin? I have crypto coin. Currency. Well, I didn't ask if you had it. I was asking what you thought about it. Well, uh, my thoughts are, if you want to take the risk and buy it, yes. I, I, you know, part of me is thinking it's not really real. But as, as far as a, an investment, that's one thing because you know you can't eat it. It's just a thing. But what do you, do you think that it's going their whole monetary system is going to go digital and change and shift to that? Because I have a little saying I say often is Captain Kirk never had a wallet. Yeah, <laughs> you just yeah. had this. You still got to eat. How right. did that money come from, and how did it work? You know, so. You know, there's some people saying that the banks are going to come up with their own cryptocurrency, but they don't want the banks being in control. They want the people in control and, and Bitcoin's just one. Right. Then there's that Ethereum and then someone's going to come up with their own thing. And I'm, I'm an online marketer, so I do a lot of affiliate marketing and there's people making sure. money online. There's people that create their own BS coin, whatever the heck it is. Right. And they try and get people into it. So right. the whole concept of it, you know, they're talking about getting rid of coins and money because of the COVID stuff. It carries germs. And that's part of their rationale for turning it digital. But I kind of wonder where, where do you think it's all going to go? Do you think there's going to be a one world currency or do you think every country can have not. their own thing? Or what? I, I hope not. I hope we don't come to a one world currency, to be quite honest with you. Uh, every country has various economies, you know, I, I, I don't, I hope not. I, I, and to tell you whether it will or not, I, I can't answer that. I just hope not. Um, and as far as the cryptocurrency goes, like again, if you if you want to ask yourself, if I lose all of the money that I invest in this, will I be okay? Yeah, it's like gambling. You know, if you can it afford that ten grand, you it's, can gamble. It's, it's a crapshoot. It's a Russian roulette. You know, you're throwing. You're. It's a roulette wheel. You're throwing the. You know, making the bet. Well, the most investments bet. actually are. Um, I'm invested in REITs because I don't think real estate's ever going to go away. I think it's, uh -huh. we're always going to need a roof over our head somehow. Love, 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 love real estate. But you yeah. never know what's going to happen. But it's the the REITs that I'm in involves with uh, it's commercial, residential, storage lockers, shopping centers, vacation homes, retirement homes. It's kind of pretty encompassing right. as far as something with a roof over your head. Yes, REITs are great. And also, you know, if people, I, I'm an avid real estate investor myself. So I not only enjoy REITs, but I also enjoy buying, selling, flipping. And oh, that yeah. is a great money maker as well. Yeah. So you're a Grant Cardone fan? A what? Grant Cardone? No. <laughs> you, don't, you, don't, you, don't, you don't know Grant Cardone? Uh uh. He's, I call him testosterone Cardone because <laughs> he's very in your face kind of thing and he's a he he says um own how does he say own multiple doors rent one door yes so he means to get apartment complexes and multi-family dwellings and all that and own them yes and then, then rent your house yes <laughs> that's great <laughs> look him up you might like grant cardone i'm not sure okay he's a piece of work look him up. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask do you have um uh, like do you do seminars or workshops or like online teaching or anything like that? I do. I, I generally, I don't do a whole lot of online teaching. I usually do live financial freedom seminars, uh, which I thoroughly enjoy. But during this COVID, I did do two financial seminars online. I actually like the face-to-face -face contact, human being in person, yeah. I prefer. Um, and I've written, a, you know, I've written four books as well, which are also on Amazon. Okay. Uh, because my books can go places where maybe I can't right. get to. So, um, and that's another great way for people to learn how to manage your money in a greater way as well. Yeah, I'm an advocate of the face-to-face -to -face too. My background, the Magic Brad thing comes because I started doing magic when I was a little kid that got me in the event industry. And then I started doing events to market products and services. 
And yeah. we would do things for event planners where we got well, we're on Lake Minnetonka. It's a big giant lake over here. And uh, there's a guy that I know that has the big cruise boats that he does out there. So we would do like, like Sunday brunches and we'd invite a bunch of people that are interested in financial stuff. Yeah. And then there would be a financial planner that's on board. And like you said, rather than, than uh, trying to persuade somebody into something, they're just on the boat for two hours and they get to know each other and then right. so the relationship develops. And that yeah. before that, COVID, it was a, it was a good thing, but now I've shifted into this online world. Again. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> What's the names of your books? Well, one of them is called money matters. And the reason it's entitled that is because money does matter. You have to have money to live. Yeah. And then the book itself has, discusses matters of money, whether you want to budget, demolish debt, build wealth. I talk about, I have one chapter in there about the importance of having right thinking because thoughts become words, words become actions, actions become habits, and habits become a way of life. So if you're always saying, well, I'll never get out of debt, I'll never get out of debt, then everything within you is going to move you towards I'll never get out of debt. Right. So we have to change our words. We have to change the way we think about that. Uh, so that's one book, Money Matters. And then the first book was 31 Days to a Greater Understanding of Money, which obviously was a first book. That title's way too long. <laughs> and then Money Nuggets, which is a little mini book. And then I also have a real estate book called You Can Do It. And so real estate investing made simple. You can do it. So everywhere. And those are all on Amazon? They're all on Amazon. Okay. Yeah. I will yeah. link them in the in the YouTube description. Great. Right. Wonderful. <laughs> Very cool. Where's there? Is there anything else you might want to share other than that? I'm going to beam this up to YouTube and get it off and uh, okay. I'll keep these kind of short so people can consume them. Rather, than, you, ever, you ever been to those like three hour webinars? It's like, oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. I like short and sweet. Get to yep. the, get to the punchline. Yep. I believe uh, it's good to do multiple ones. So if there's another one you want to do, and maybe you want to talk about the, like investing in real estate. Yeah. Or, Happy to do that. To do a Absolutely. series like that because then people get to see it twice. And you know, it takes sure. like seven to 30 impressions to be someone, before someone knows you exist. <laughs> Happy to do it. Uh, I would like to say the last thing is it doesn't matter what your financial situation is. No matter how much debt you have, there is hope for your situation. If you got into debt, you can get out of debt. Yes. Absolutely. That's encouraging because some people do feel like I'm in this so deep. But the first thing you do is you put the cards on the table. That's exactly right. <laughs> Cards on the table. <laughs> okay. Well, Karen, thank you very much. I appreciate you taking the time and I'm going to get to work and beam this up to the universe. So thanks very much and enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you so much. You too. Peace. Bye-bye.